So you're studying for the SAT Math Level 2 subject test. You've come to the right place. I'm Dan from WeWillTeachYouMath.com. Guys, when you're using these videos to study, make sure you pause the video at the beginning when the problem first comes on the screen and try it on your own. Most of your practice should be done this way, actively and independently. Then, if after you try the problem on your own, you still find it tricky, that's when you watch the video explanation. In fact, you can use any resources that you have available to you to try to figure it out so that the next time a similar problem comes your way, you'll be ready. Enjoy, and thanks for watching. 41, if 2 sine squared x minus 3 equals 3 cosine x, and 90 is less than x is less than 270, the number of values that satisfy the, this equation is, well, let's do a quick little unit circle. We have 90 is less than x is less than 270. So we're talking about a range of values that's in the second and third quadrant. So if we get any answer choices that are outside those two quadrants, we should exclude them from our answer. Um, so with that in mind, let's tackle the algebra. We have 2 sine squared x minus 3 equals 3 cos x. Unfortunately, we have cosine and sine in the same equation, so that's going to make it a little tricky to, to solve. What I'm going to suggest is we do a substitution. We know from the Pythagorean identity that sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. So we can solve that for sine squared x and get, I don't know why I wrote 0, it's clearly 1. We can write sine squared x equals 1 minus cosine squared x. And then we can substitute that in for sine squared x. So we'll get 2 times 1 minus cos squared x minus 3 equals 3 cos x. And then we can distribute and say 2 minus 2 cos squared x minus 3 equals 3 cos x. And now we have everything in terms of cosine, so it is going to be a quadratic solution, but I'm going to suggest that we add everything over to the right side, and we'll just get 0 on the left. We'll be left with 2 cos squared x on the right, plus 3 cos x. Uh, and then on the left, we have 2 minus 3, which is minus 1, but we're going to add it over to the right, so it becomes plus 1 on the right. And now we can factor this into 2 cos x plus 1, and cos x plus 1. And we could just check that real quick. If you distribute, you'll get 2 cos squared x, and then you'll get 2 cos x, and 1 cos x is 3 cos x for the middle term, and then 1 times 1 is 1. So it works. And now we can set each of these terms equal to 0, and we'll find out one of two things must be true. Either cos x from the first one equals negative 1 half, or cos x equals negative 1. Well, where is the cosine negative 1 half? I don't know the exact angle, and we could work that out based on our memory of the unit circle and all that, but we know the cosine is negative in the second and third quadrant, anywhere left of the y-axis, so there should be, it doesn't even matter what the answer is, because they just want to know the number of values that satisfy it, there should be a value in the second quadrant that's going to work, and a value in the third quadrant that's going to work. So, without even figuring out what they are, there's two right there, so we're going to go with at least two, A and B are gone. And then cos x equals negative one, where is that true? Well, that's true at this point right here, because this point is negative one, zero. So 180 degrees, or pi, would be that one. But again, it doesn't matter what the value is, it just matters that there's another one. And that's it, there's three total places, because they all meet the criteria of being between 90 and 270. So those three are the ones that work. D is the answer. Hi, thanks for watching. If anything's still confusing or you need a little extra help, drop me an email, leave a comment, or give me a call. I answer every message. And if you want to check out more videos like this, visit wewillteachyoumath.com. See you in the next video.